Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN with a digital rebar demo. This is about our bare metal cloud capability, which is really about self-service and resource utilization, something that we call pooling, uh, and really a very powerful feature for self-managed infrastructure. So the whole idea here is that RackN is making it really easy for you to run your own infrastructure, that's the core of our mission, and also make it so that other systems can consume that infrastructure in a repeatable, manageable way. And it's important that we've not only made the APIs easy to consume, but we've also made it easy for operators to see what's happening when other uh, services are consuming your infrastructure through the system. So let me take you through this process. Uh, what, we've, what I've got in front of me is a, a couple of test machines, and basically these are set up so I can run a load generator and watch some, some load go, and they're in the default pool. And I've got a couple of machines staged in the background over here for us to actually run them through a provisioning cycle as part of our pooling uh, resource driven by Terraform. Uh, and we are going to show your Terraform bare metal um, automation plan, but I want to explain a little bit about how this is working before we get there. So the fundamentals are, are really straightforward. I can come in, I have uh, seven test machines that I can put sample load on, and if I go in to one of the machines here, uh, default, I can pick default, and I can pick, say, three machines, and then run that through a pool. And you'll see I went from uh, seven available to four. And I have three machines chosen at random out of this pool for, for use. And while that's, that's sort of handy, I can take machines and I can give you machines at random. I'm not actually provisioning them. I'm not doing any actions on them. I'm just assigning them back and forth. What, I, what we're really about is provisioning operations, really workflow operations. So to do that, I want to actually define some actions that need to be taken. Um, by this pool. So I'm going to take the default pool, I'm just defining it, and I'm going to set a workflow to do that load generation action that I was showing you. When I allocate a machine, I'm going to do the same when I release that machine. That looks really good. And then I can do things like add a profile to it. So I think I have a P1 sample profile that I can add. That looks really good. And I can even add, say, a parameter here. I need to make sure this sticks. There we go. Thank you. And I could put on um, a value. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set the wait time uh, number. We'll set it to two seconds. So it'll take a little, it defaults to one. So in this case, I'm now going to take two seconds to provision. And then when I release, I'm going to do load generator. And I'm going to want to say, you know what? I don't need the add profiles, but I do want to remove that P1 profile so that it's not hanging around. That was just for that provisioning operation. And I actually am going to do a lot of cleanup to remove that parameter also. So wait time. Set it back to zero. That's good. And keep not selecting this correctly. That looks good. So now what I've got when I hit add is I've defined a work a, a pool behavior for that pool operation. So if I came back into my overview here and did the same thing, select three machines, say, out of that pool, what you'll see now is that those machines are actually going through this workflow. So if I come back over to here, you will see operations in process for the pooling activity. So I'm allocating machine that spins up a workflow. It assigns a profile that would allow me to set values and configuration settings and things like that. And if I look into the test itself, I've got my value set here and it's taking a little bit more time to generate that sample load. That looks really good. You can see I've now got six of my machines in the pool. I can come back over to my overview and uh, if I wanted to, I could set them here, pick all the available machines, all the in-use machines, and release them. Uh, and uh, you can see all six of those machines have now gone back into the pool as available. So pretty straightforward. I could do uh, similar actions on specific machines here if I needed to act on an individual machine. So for example, if this machine had been uh, allocated, still I get the same behaviors here. 
I could come in and say, you know what, I'm just going to pull this one machine back or fix this machine or rerun an action on the machine. So as an operator, I can go and influence what's actually happening to the self-service API behind the scenes. So if I had a machine that gets stuck or somebody's like, hey, I need help with test five, you could reset it, you could take actions on it. Um, of course, the, depending on the role-based authentication, the operators can do the same thing when they're using the system. So I have the power to go and release a machine individually as, as the, the service manager behind, behind. So this is all using the UX. Everything Racken does is API-driven. So nothing I'm showing you is actually a UX function. It's all driven by the API. The API is, is super consumable um, from that perspective. And we've wrapped the, the CLI the same way um, around this. So I have a pools option, and I can see the uh, status of Sorry, so there's a ton of help in this. If I want to see, I need to see the status of default. So in this case, it's showing me all of the machines that are in that pool and what they're uh, by pool. So I can see all of the free machines. I don't have any in use at the moment. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I don't want you to, I don't want to hide the background because we're about to start changing machines in, the, in it. So we're gonna keep the windows small. Uh, I could also see which pools are active. Sorry, there's no pool named active, which pools are active. And then if I wanted to, I can say pools manage allocate uh, from default. And if I do this, this is actually going to allocate a machine from the default pool. You can see it doing that operation in the back. If I want two machines here, I could actually say count uh, two machines. And it's going to go pull two machines. So that's looking really good. Um, so all these, these basic operations or just API calls in the background um, with parameters and, and values that you can influence. We have this really well documented, so it's, it's pretty straightforward to write API integrations against it. That's exactly what um, we did for the prototype Terraform provider that I'm about to show you. Um, if I wanted to, I can come in and uh, re uh, release uh, default, and I can say all machines. All these, these are documented in here, and you'll see I very quickly went back and got the machines out. So pretty straightforward from that perspective. Right now it's pulling machines randomly out of that pool. If I actually had machines that I wanted, a couple of these machines I, I've gone in and I've defined this, this value, inventory manufacturer, and I've set it to rack in. So if I come back over here and make a allocate request and specify that value equals rack in. So this is just regular API filters for rack in. For digital rebar and in that case it's actually identified a machine that has that value and if I come in and say count equals two it's gonna tell me I don't actually have that many left in the pool and it's gonna fail uh, there is a min and a, and a count so you can say oh I need uh, two mach one machine but I, I'd like to but I, I can deal with one and it's gonna give me back those answers um, and then I can come back and look at things like what my uh, status is. And when I do that, you'll see exactly what I have these machines in use. Those machines are allocated. Pretty straightforward overall. Um, and it's a, it's a really you know, easy way to implement this. The thing that makes this different than what Rackens produced in the past is you don't know what machine you're going to get in advance. This is give me a machine and then run it through a workflow. And I'm about to show you how you can do things like set SSH keys and really produce cloud behaviors out of Digital Rebar, even as it's running bare metal. So let's uh, go ahead and release all these machines so I can play in Terraform. Now we've got those machines going. That looks really good. And I'm going to go in. i have uh, make sure I'm initialized in Terraform. So this is the prototype Terraform provider. Uh, it's a complete rewrite of the earlier one we had to take advantage of this pools feature, which um, frankly simplifies the driver and, and eliminates the state uh, contention problem that you can get into a Terraform because you're getting a machine, you're releasing a machine, it's very cloud-like. And now, if I edit my test plan, what you'll see is I have my provider, I've, I've provided my username and password, it's picking up my um, endpoint ID from my command line. Uh, I could type it here if I wanted, or I could provide username and password from the command line, and they would just come in as parameters instead of here. And what I've done is I've said, hey, when you run this first resource group, test one, 
add profile terraform profiles have to exist in advance you can't make up ad hoc ones um, add my key so set the authorized keys value to the to my my key and then add the parameters foo and bar to the machine and then I've had a second resource uh, group test two that uses the filter so it filters the, the same filter I showed you and it's going to select one of the machines now the first test group could pick any machine from the pool that the second one is only going to pick ones that match that filter so now when I take this and run this terraform what you'll see is giving me some information about what I'm going to do you'll notice there's actually a timeout set so it's going to wait until those actions are taken and it's gone through and done exactly what I asked. So test three was picked out of the pool. It has the Terraform profile set. If I drill in and you can see test seven got, got chosen by the filter. Here is my, my key set to access key so it'll be set. Foo and bar are now in here. Um, and my dev wait time was set by the um, profile. So we're actually unioning the things that Terraform asked for and the things that the uh, pool definition asked for. If I come back over here and now destroy, I'm going to go ahead and destroy this. That makes sense, you're, you know, you're watching the deallocation, but you'll notice it also cleans up the parameters. It removes the ex, extra, um, it, the parameters, it removes the profiles. Literally, we're, we're able to control exactly what's happening. And this is super useful because now when I give somebody a machine, I can say, all right, you are gonna get a machine and we're gonna put this usage profile, a dev test profile or a machine learning profile versus a Kubernetes or a virtualization profile. One of the things that I glossed over in the pools definition over here was you can not only uh, control allocate and release, but you can actually control enter and exit actions. So I could come in to find the star pool and set my workflow over here. Same thing, load generator, so we can just watch it go. And what that what that allows me to do here is if I came back into my machine, so here's test test one and test two, I can move them into the star pool. When I do that, that action of transitioning them into a different pool will also run a workflow. So if you had a generic pool of machines and you wanted to move some into a virtualization pool, then you could actually rerun the BIOS and set it to virtualization optimized. When you reallocate it, you can reset it back to base. When you allocate it to a machine learning pool, you might change its profile to be more suited for machine learning or storage or what have you. So we've really thought through how an uh, operator manages these resources behind the scenes to create good self-service operations. But if you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, Rob, this is great. You're playing with some virtual you know, Docker containers behind the scenes that aren't really machines. Let's see some real bare metal cloud. And I'm ready to do exactly that for you. So here's what I've got. I've got uh, two machines over here, both of them running um, in a uh, ready state. So they're both in a sledgehammer. I'm going to make sure that's the case. So we're going to take these two machines, go over into a discover base workflow. And that looks good. They are both running in discover base and they look like they are good to go. So that is exactly what I want to be happening here. And we need to go define, these are in the hard pool, so we're gonna have to actually set up the pool correctly for this. So here's the hard pool. Get these machines out of the way. And when I allocate here, I'm gonna, I am going wanna set the workflow to be a uh, image deployment. So we're gonna use our image-based deployment super fast. Uh, it's install CentOS by copying the image directly to disk and then booting it. To make that happen, I do have uh, the, the um, image values, you know, where to pull that image from, uh, what operating system it is, things like that right here. That's great. And then um, what I want, so that's, that's gonna get me going. I'm gonna let Terraform inject my SSH key, which I'll need to complete the demo. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna set it back to discover base. So this will move it, you know, reboot it, set it back into Sledgehammer um, and be ready. Uh, I'm going to remove that profile because I don't I don't want things hanging around that I don't I don't need. That looks really good. And then I'm going to also remove the parameter access keys. So access keys is going to make sure it's a double check to make sure that I haven't 
left around um, the you know somebody's access keys on the system. So I'm going to make sure that that is removed as part of this action. So here we've gone. I've saved this. I now have the heart is ready to do machine deployments. These two machines are in the heart pool, so that's great. And Terraform is our next step. So I'm ready to go ahead and modify the Terraform plan uh, to start this process going. Before I do, I want to actually SSH in, show you that I'm, 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 we're actually doing what I said we're doing about removing credentials. So if I come in, booted this machine a couple times, I have to clear the key gen, try to boot, log in again, I'm denied because my keys aren't on the system. So now if I come in and add myself to this plan, I need to set the pool. So all I have to do is say pool equals heart. This is the pool that I've, I'm using for this. And then I need to tell it I want to use both machines. Makes it a little bit more interesting. And then from there, I'm ready to Terraform apply. looks good it's telling me we're going to do three remember I've got the two and then I have the one from that other plan what I want to do is uh, allow you to watch the machines actually go through the, the cycle which is useful here so these are the two machines that I have um, in the system in the background looks great over here um, what's going to happen when I say yes we're going to get these two machines provisioning they are reflected by these two VMs so I can say yes here and what you'll see is we get full visibility. So Terraform is acting the way you expect. The, the APIs are taking the machines. So it looks like it's creating it. So it's a cloud experience of getting a machine. It's in digital rebars, allocating it. So it's moving it through a workflow process. We're getting high visibility about what's going on in the workflow process. The machines, those machines themselves are actually um, going through this install process. Um, we're using image deploy, which is super fast. We're just copying the bits of the install directly to disk, and then we're going to cloud init, install the key, and you'll get to watch those processes happening. So as soon as the, the disk copy is finished, it'll reboot and then start uh, cloud init. And uh, this is this is what you would expect to happen. I keep saying this, it, it's you know sort of anticlimactic to have a system work the way you expect, but that's the purpose of doing the self-managed infrastructure. We are actually taking the cloud behaviors you expect and bringing them to self-managed infrastructure, right? Bare metal as a cloud. Um, and the way you know it's a cloud is because you're using a cloud tool like Terraform to go ahead and do that provisioning. Um, and I've shown you how to do it with the APIs and the UX and the CLI. So all pretty straightforward. In this case, we're just about to finish. Uh, those two machines are, are rebooting uh, their normal operating system. Digital Rebar will detect that because they check in and we're done. And, and uh, Terraform finished at the same time, so that's really good. Uh, that's what you'd expect. So here, if I SSH into this, uh, it's going to be CentOS this time because I've now installed uh, the operating system. Once again, KeyGen says, hey, this is a new system, which it is. And now I can log in and actually get the image deployed from that system. So that went through end to end. I got the keys that I was expecting. That's great. And now I'm done. So I can Terraform destroy exactly what you do in a cloud instance. Confirm that this is missing and watch my machines literally get torn down um, and go back through that base platform. So that is about as simple as you can get, right? We're literally doing this recovery and that workflow could be adapted to scrub the disks, reset the BIOS, clean things up, uh, report inventory, do um, you know, stop the clock running if you have you know, some type of internal accounting or your service provider and you, you want to say, hey, customer, we're billing you, we're not billing you. All those things are really straightforward to set up as part of a workflow operation here. Um, and you can see they're just about done. The machines are checking back in to Digital Rebar. And um, boy, that looks really, really clean. I hope this was helpful. Everything I'm showing you, you can do yourself. You can build a digital rebar system. Pooling is baked in, and you can go ahead and play uh, and, and see how it works yourself. The whole point of what we do is self-managed infrastructure, and that is why we want you to self-trial and figure out how it works yourself. I hope this was helpful. Um, once again, this is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN with a digital rebar pooling and bare metal cloud demo. Thanks.